What did you see when you arrived? An old woman, was out in the yard, dead with blowflies on her face. The old man was inside with his breast blown open by a scatter gun and his feet burned. He was still alive, but just was. Said it was them two Wharton boys done it and rode up drunk. Objection. Hearsay. By a declaration, Your Honor. Objection's overruled. Proceed, Mr. Cogburn. All them two Wharton boys, that be Otis and CC, throw down on him. Asked him where his money was, and when he wouldn't tell him, they lit pine knots, held him to his feet. He told him the money was in a fruit jar under a gray rock at the corner of a smokehouse. And then? Oh, he died on us, passed away in considerable pain. What'd you do then? Well, me and Marshal Potter went out to the smokehouse, and that rock had been moved, and the jar with the money in it was gone. Objection. Speculative. Sustained. You found a flat gray rock in the corner of the smokehouse with a hollowed out space beneath it. If the prosecutor's going to give evidence, I suggest he be sworn. Mr. Cockburn, what did you find, if anything, in the corner of that smokehouse? Found a flat gray rock with a hollowed out space under it, nothing there. And then what no did you do? jar, nothing. Yeah, what did you do then? Well, rolled up to the Whartons there, and there were the North Fork strikes of Canadian. What did you find? I answered the Canadian. I had my glass, spotted them two boys and their old daddy Aaron down in the creek bank with some hogs. They killed a shoat, had a fire built under a wash pot for scalding water. What'd you do? Now, as we was U.S. Marshals, I hollered out there, and we needed to talk to his two boys. They raised an axe, commenced to cussing us and blackguarding this court. What, what did you do then? Well, I backed away from the axe and trying to talk some sense into them. Uh, while this was going on, Cece, he edges over to the wash pot there behind the steam and picks up a shotgun. Potter seen him, but it was too late. C.C. Wharton pulled down on Potter with one barrel and turned to do the same for me, and I shot him. When the old man raised the axe, I shot him. Otis lit out, and I shot him. C.C. Wharton and Aaron Wharton were dead when they hit the ground. Otis was just winged. Did you find the jar with $120 in it? Leading? Sustained. What happened then? Found a jar with $120 in it. What became of Otis Wharton? There it sits. You may ask, Mr. Gowdy. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. Mr. Cogburn. In your four years as U.S. Marshal, how many men have you shot? Never shot nobody that didn't have to. Well, that was not the question. How many? Shot or killed? <laughs> Let us restrict it to killed so that we may have a manageable figure. About 12, 15, stopping men in flight, defending myself, etc. Around 12, he says, or 15. So many, you cannot keep a precise count. I have examined the records and can supply the accurate figure. Oh, uh, I believe them two Wharton boys makes it 23. And how many members of this one family, the Wharton family, have you killed? Me did, or? Did you also shoot Dub Wharton, brother, and Cleet Wharton, half-brother? Oh. Cleet was selling ardent spirits to the Cherokee. Come at me with a king bolt. A king bolt? Uh, you were armed, and he advanced upon you with nothing more than a king bolt from a wagon tongue? I, I've seen men bat a torp with nothing bigger than a king bolt. I defended myself. Returning to the other encounter with Aaron Wharton and his two remaining sons, you sprang from cover with your revolver in hand. I did. Loaded and cocked. Oh, if it ain't loaded and cocked, it don't shoot. And like his son, Aaron Wharton advanced against an armed man. Well, he was armed. He had an axe raised. I believe you testified you backed away from Aaron Wharton. That's right. Which direction were you going? I always go backwards when I'm backing up. <laughs> Very amusing. 
Now he advanced upon you much in the man of Cleet Wharton, menacing you with that little old king bolt or roll up newspaper or whatever it was. Yes, sir. He commenced to cussing and laying about with threat. And you were backing away. How many steps before the shooting started? Oh, seven, eight steps. So, Aaron Wharton, keeping pace, advancing away from his campfire. Seven, eight steps. What would that be? 15, 20 feet? I suppose. Will you explain to this jury, Mr. Cogburn, why Mr. Warden was found immediately by his wash pot, one arm in the fire, his sleeve and hand smoldering? Mm -hmm. Did you move the body after you shot him? Why would I do that? You did not drag the body over to the fire, fling his arm in. No, sir. Two witnesses who arrived on the scene will testify to the location of the body. You do not remember moving the body. So it was a cold-blooded bushwhack while poor Mr. Wharton was tending to his campfire. Objection! Well, if that's where the body was, I might have moved him. I do not remember. Why would you move the body, Mr. Cogburn? Them hogs rooting around, they might have moved him. <laughs> I do not remember. 